Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Our guest this week is Jim Lauterbach. Jim runs events business VidCon at Viacom CBS. Jim joined VidCon in 2014 as editorial director, took over as CEO in 2017, and sold VidCon to Viacom in 2018. He previously built and sold Video Network Vision 3 to Discovery, was editor-in-chief of PC Magazine, and helped start cable TV network Tech TV. Hey, Jim, how's it going? It's going good. Thanks. It's good to be here. Yeah, so glad to have you. Right. And it's a real pleasure to meet you online, even though we live in the same little town. <laughs> I know, and we have been. for like 23 years or something <laughs> like that. So, so anyway, I'm, a welcome. Relative new, I'm a relative newcomer compared to you, apparently. Yeah, well, um, welcome, and uh, we can't wait to hear some of the good stuff you have to share with us. Yeah, me too. And so glad that uh, we got introduced. I think it was Sherry Huss. Was, was she the one who put us in touch? Our yeah, previous yep, guest? yeah. 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 yeah, Sherry's great. Um, yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. So tell us about your first tool, which is a backpack. Yeah, so uh, I travel a lot, both for fun and for work. And, you know, last most of the time I have that little rolly suitcase that we all have, you know, mm-hmm. the black ones with the wheels. Sure. But it, and, and I like to travel light, uh, and that's fine. But I found an even lighter way to travel. And this backpack, it's 35 liters and it's basically the size that you can use in Europe for a carry-on. It's just the right size. Mm-hmm. And it's designed in a way that you, know, you carry it uh, on your back and it's got, you know, it's got the straps for your waist. But it's designed in a way that it can easily be closed up so that it can essentially almost be a duffel bag so that you can put it under the seat. You can put it in the, in, above the seat. Or if they make you check it, you can check it without mm-hmm. worrying about it. And it's just, it's so intelligently designed. It's really comfortable. And it allows me to take just this one bag everywhere I go around the world, whether it's for work or for fun. I mean, I've taken it through Sri Lanka. I've taken it around Singapore. I've taken it around Europe. And, you know, until my back gives out, to me, it's the best (laughs) way to travel if I don't need to bring, you know, 12 pieces of equipment and uh, lots of clothes. And But I can go for weeks with it. What about like... You know, um, I occasionally will try to piggyback personal travel on top of a business trip where I have to speak and I need, you know, press shirts and press pants. Will they fit into this thing? Yeah, well, the packing cubes help with the press shirt and press pants. I can usually get by with one outfit of, you know, press shirt and press pants or maybe two shirts and some nice pants and nice shoes. The key is when you travel with something like this is to wear your heaviest things on the plane <laughs> seriously uh-huh. and bulkiest things on the plane so i'll put you know i'll wear my hiking boots like you'll see me mm-hmm. stomp onto the plane in my hiking boots but i'll have a nice looking pair of shoes inside the bag right so you, you've got your down jacket on and your sweater and uh yeah right yeah, so you're a seasoned traveler you know the, all the tricks I, I try to and then you know the one other thing that i pair with it it's sort of like a you know tool and a quarter is a scotty vest which is a really nice vest that has a zillion pockets. Mm -hmm. So even if you do end up, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't carry that on the plane. It's like, fine. I can stick my computer in there. I can stick an uh, a tablet in there. Your vest? Yeah, it's a, it's Uh, has really big pockets. I mean, I, I bring a really small computer. This is not a 15 inch behemoth. Right, right, right. right. Do they still make Scotty vests? Yeah, Scott and Scott's a buddy. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, Mm -hmm. but he's still making them. He's still up in, uh, you know, he's still up in Idaho doing his Mm -hmm. thing. And mm-hmm. uh, has a lot of good travel gear. But to me, the vest is still the best thing. Uh-huh. That's yeah. cool. Um, and so this also has this little backpack, which is, you know, I don't know, the size of a um, uh, very small suitcase, has a belt, a hip belt, so that you could walk a long distance with it if you wanted to. Exactly. Right? It has a hip belt. Um, and it it has really nice straps. Now the straps are very nicely padded. They go over your shoulder. They also have that little I don't know what you call that thing that connects the, the straps together in front, in front of yeah, your right. your breastbone. Uh-huh. Uh, so it can be really comfortable. 
And this one is not, they, they sell another one that's a little bit more expensive. That's like completely waterproof. This one's water resistant. I've carried it through. And you know, when it really comes in handy and, and you'll appreciate this because you do what I do, which is go work and then go have fun. When you get to one of those streets in Europe, that's all cobblestone <laughs> and you look down, and you're like, if I were rolling my wheelie luggage through this, I would be mm-hmm. in severe pain mm-hmm. or, or like going up and down the, the Metro, or whatever they call it in Rome, where the, you know, this, supposedly they have escalators that work, but we all know they never work. Or if they do, they, they just go on forever. Or in London where you want to change from one tube to the other and you just walk about three miles to get from one place to the other. This comes in so handy. That's cool. Quite a great okay. one. So this is called the uh, Tortuga? Tortuga is the company. Okay. And the product is the Set Out Men's Backpack. And they have a, a couple of different ones. But the they have a 45-liter version, which is bigger, but it is not a European carry-on size. Like, it's good for the U.S., but when you hop on Ryanair, they'll take one look at it, and likely they'll be like, it's 60 bucks, and you can't carry it on. <laughs> so this is a 35-liter is the is the size you're looking for then. Exactly. Or at least for me. If you do most of your right. traveling in the U.S., you could get by with the bigger one. Right. But the bigger one means more weight, and that means, you know, you might strain right, right. something. So mm-hmm. yeah. keep that in mind. Okay. Perfect. So you have another um, suggestion for us um, doing with sound. The um, Sonos, which I have, I have some Sonos, but maybe I don't know about this one. Tell us about what it is and what it looks like. Yeah. And I've been a Sonos addict for the last 20 years. So I have a lot of them around my house, but this I've wanted a portable battery operated one for a long time. And they never made one up until maybe two years ago. And the reason why, if I'm out on the porch or I'm working in the garden or somewhere around the house, I can't bring my Sonos with me unless, you know, they had this, they had the series five that had a little handle, but you still had to plug it in. The Sonos move is a beautiful, it's a great speaker, although it's only a a mono speaker. It's got a lot of things in it. So it sounds really good and it's got a little handle, but it actually has a battery in it. And so you can carry it around outside and set it up. I don't have a pool. You know, we, we don't live in a place where pools are common. But, you know, if you lived in a place where you needed music on the pool, you could bring this out there as well. And you can actually pair two of them together if portable sound is important to you. But Sonos always, to me, has great quality components. They sound great. And if you're invested in the Sonos ecosystem, which I certainly am, Mm-hmm. It is a great way to bring that Sonos music around with you right. around your house and Can outside. You just describe very briefly what the Sonos system is for those who don't know it. Sure. Yeah. It's um, smart speakers. They sort of invented the smart speaker category. And essentially what they are is they are rather than having your stereo component and your wired speakers that plug into it. What Sonos does is they take speakers, they have Wi-Fi inside the speakers and uh, they will access via an app on your phone, on your computer, either music that you have stored on a server in your house, on your phone itself, Spotify, Sirius XM, and they've branched out into home theater equipment as well. So you can get uh, sound bars that work with your TV and they actually have a subwoofer. It is basically, you can ha- just have one, Like the Sonos Move, if you want a nice, and it's Bluetooth also, a nice Bluetooth speaker, and then maybe it's a gateway drug to the rest of the Sonos ecosystem. But you can use it all around your house. And the nice thing about it is, let's say you've got one in every room in your house, like some people who who I won't mention. You can (laughs) play it in the dining room, and then somebody else in your house could play something entirely different in the bedroom. Or... You could set them all up to play the same thing at the same time in what they call party mode, or you can like three or four of them together. And Sonos, one of the problems, one of the things they solved early on was music synchronization. Really hard to do over Wi-Fi or any wireless because you'd always end up with something just a little out, you know, like, oh my gosh, the the drums sound different over there. And it gets a little, Mm -hmm. gets a little like, you know, a little reverby, uh, echoey. And they really solved that early on and were able to sync up music really, really well. And they they are, you know, now, 20 years ago when they came out, they actually 
were on a mesh network and they built their own mesh network and they used Wi-Fi, but they used mesh for the speakers to connect each other to do that. It's not as important that you do that now because Wi-Fi is better and faster, and uh, but it still has that if you need it. Right. Yeah, they were kind of way, way ahead in having that kind of... Um, they weren't actually wireless in the beginning, but having this sense of like sending music to your whole house in a kind of affordable way. Um, they have been... Some of that market has come and taken away with the Amazons and the um, Alexas and other little ones, but they still are probably the best at a kind of a systems view of music and sound in the house. Um, so um, the Sonos, uh, what you're talking about here, the Move, um, would be if it, would it make sense if you just had only that, or do you really need to have other parts of the system to make that make sense? Mm-hmm. No, it, it would make sense if you just want it alone because it is Bluetooth as well. You don't have to have everything all set up. Okay. Although even if you had it set up with an app, you could still connect with it uh, to stuff on your phone. So it, it's also, and Sonos is, has added in support with Alexa. So it works with Alexa. Pretty sure the Move does as well. I don't really use that much Alexa here in the house. I have a couple of Sonos speakers with Alexa built in. I'm not sure if this one does or not. I should probably check. But if you are in the... You know, some people are Google, some people are Apple. If you're right, in the right. Alexa world, mm-hmm. Sonos makes a lot of sense. And also, I think it's surprising to me, and I haven't seen this either. Maybe somebody will bring it on at some point. But they're actually working with IKEA to do a Sonos that you can buy in IKEA that's custom branded IKEA. So I don't think you have to put it together, though. <laughs> <laughs> it comes flat. It's a little flat. The flat little back box. Sonos. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's really great. Um, Sonos Move for. Yeah, and 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 they they um it, it is a nice little app too on your phone to control stuff, which is really good. So uh, tell us about um another um a another tool that you have here. Um, your next one. Yeah, the next one, and uh, it, it it I'll talk specifically about this product, but it's part of a more generic type of product that I encourage anybody, particularly now that we're all working from home that they think about. So, you know, I've had a lot of monitors. I used to have multiple monitors on my desktop hooked up to my PC or Mac, although I'm a PC person. So we'll stick with the PC thing. And so I'd have, you know, one monitor that I'd put my email on another monitor that I'd do my work on. And then I might have a third monitor for Slack and it got a little crowded and it's difficult because it's, you know, yeah, you can slide an app from one monitor or another, but it's kind of a pain. And to get something that extends across multiple monitors, you have that break in the middle. Mm -hmm. So about five years ago, I picked up the Dell, uh, this is going to be a mouthful, U3415W, but (laughs) it's a 34-inch wide monitor, but it's not a 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 monitor. It's... it. I'm gonna. I'm sitting at it and looking at it right now. Let's say like it's a about, panoramic view. Yeah, almost. it's like and it's curved. Maybe it's mm. about 16 inches high. So what it is is it's all. It's like having two, almost three, standard 1280 oh. by 1024 monitors shoved together. It's 3440 by 1440. The resolution is great. And now I've gotten rid of my multiple monitors. It's all in one monitor. And if I want to have one big thing running across all of them, which I can. I'm playing a video game and I want it to be immersive. But the fact is my normal work is such that I've got, you know, Slack on one corner and then I might have a Zoom call in the upper left corner and I'll have a browser here and then maybe a word processor there. Or if I'm working on a spreadsheet and I I don't know about you guys, but I work with some people who, you know, they'll make these huge spreadsheets with like zillions of columns. You're like, I just scroll (laughs) for, you know, till Thursday till I find out where the real meat of the spreadsheet is. Because it's so wide, you can put an entire spreadsheet, you know, with, I don't know, you can probably get all the way to Z. I don't know how many columns, how wide your columns are, but it is so helpful. And so this ultra wide WQHD curved monitor, I bought the 345, 3415W. The current version that Dell sells is the S3422DW. Now, it was about 700 bucks when I bought it. The 3422DW is also $700, but I was looking it up yesterday because I was like, well, I better see what they've, if they've mm-hmm. upgraded it. They upgraded a little bit. I mean, it's a, it's a hundred hertz refresh, but it's on sale for $399. That's yeah. insane. Which it's is insane. insane. So I hope it's yeah. still on sale oh when people God. are listening to this, but 
you know, yeah. run, don't walk and get <laughs> yeah. yourself a wide monitor if you have room for it because it changed my entire work mode. I love it. I think yeah. I have to get one of these. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That looks yeah. fantastic. It does. And and so the curved part, do you like the fact that it's curved? Yeah, I you know, when curved stuff first came out, uh I was I think I was a it was a PC mag, I think. And I, I was like, this is kind of dumb. It's just a, you know, it's just a gimmick. Mm -hmm. But then I really use it. And it's it's not a hard curve. It's not like it goes from like, you know, it's not like a 90 degree curve or yeah. a 70 degree curve. <laughs> it's more like a 10 or 15 degree curve. Mm -hmm. But it's good enough that when you're looking at it, you don't, you know, it's it's it, it makes it easier to look across the entire screen. Mm -hmm. And you also don't get some of those light flare effects that you might have because it is mm -hmm. slightly curved. Mm -hmm. So, right, right. you know, when you're looking over, it's not reflecting light from somewhere else. So the curve, it, you know, it's probably a gimmick in a lot of things. But in this case, it really does work. Well, wow. and the, you say the resolution is pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, the um, the current, well, the specs of this are 3440 by 1440. And, you know, your standard with 1280 by, you know, 1024 would be your standard cheapo monitor. Right. Um, there are obviously high definition monitors that are more 16 by nine or four by right, three. Right. But this one is not so high. So right, the nice right. thing about that is I can be really wide, right? 30, 34 inches wide. And I can still stick a zoom uh, you know, camera, whether it's a, you know, I have a Logitech camera or, a, or another camera for zoom calls and things on top of it and it's not like you know the the, the conversation is looking up my nose when I'm right, right, yeah right. <laughs> well, well, it, well it's only about four hundred dollars the next obvious step is to buy two of them yeah. <laughs> well if you have the desk space i do not have desk space for two of them but <laughs> you now have but a I cockpit saw, it's just like a, a little yes. simulator <laughs> but if you're into gaming and some of that really yeah. immersive gaming that could yeah. be a really good idea yeah yeah um, you can put so a camera cool. right between wow. the two of them too. Um, well, wow, that's that's a great, that's a fantastic tip. That's really cool. Yeah, this is going to be an expensive podcast. It's an expensive <laughs> show. Yeah, <laughs> I almost bought another one just because you know yeah, why not exactly. have another one? At this that's what I'm saying. You put two of them there, or yeah. stack them on top of each other. Um, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so Jim, you have another a fourth. Uh, tool to suggest to us um nudge mail tell me yeah about and this mail. is this is for people who live their life in email like many of us do mm -hmm. and tend to use email as a, a to-do list which many of us do and it was started by um i don't know if you guys know jeremy toman he's been in the tech industry for a long time he Makes did pr similar. early on and then worked at startups he was had a product at cnet for a while um I forget what he's doing now, but he built this, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And it's a simple little thing. And what you do is when you're reading an email, and I, this happens to me all the time, I'm like, oh, that's a that's important. I need to, I need to do something about that, but not till Thursday. <laughs> what you can do is you forward the email to Thursday at nudgemail.com. And then Thursday at 6.30 in the morning, it sends the email back to you and it sits on top of your email stack when you wake up and start Thursday morning. And it's, it's so good at helping you sort of do email triage and organize like, you know, this, and, and I even, I, you can do recurring emails. Like for a long time, um, I had a, I had a house in Vermont. I had to pay taxes on it every month because we rented it out and I would always forget. And then I just created a monthly reminder on nudge mail. And uh, it just sent me an email on the first of every month saying, "Pay your Vermont taxes." <laughs> and that's great. And, and if you get in, if you get one, and this happens to me all the time, I get it, and I'm like, "Well, I'm not really ready to call that person back yet." I can snooze it for six hours, or you know, four hours, or whatever. I can say I can just forward it again to you know, to you know, January twenty third at nudgemail dot com if I want to get it on January twenty third, or I can forward it to Friday. So. It's so simple. It's so easy to use. And here's, I don't know if it's the best part, but one of the also amazing parts, it's free. Now you can pay for yes. it, but it is free and you don't have to sign up for it. You don't have to give your personal information. Well, it gets your email, so I guess it gets your personal information. But you send your first email to like Friday at nudgemail.com. And you get an email back right away saying, hi, you're new to the system. Here's a bunch of things you need to know. That's all you need to do to sign up for it. Hmm. Cool. 
And so it's 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 getting a mail from you, so therefore it's remembering where it came from, and then it's just going to bounce it back at the right time. So you say you can do uh, a day of the week, and it assumes that I guess it's the next Friday or a date or an hour. You can put hours into. Is that what yeah, you're you, saying? Yeah, you can put hours in. You can put dates. You can make it recurring. Okay, um, like every Thursday yeah. or something. And yep. so um, uh, I know that like Gmail has like a boomerang function, which I think my assistant uses. Uh, something similar to that. D- does this is this ring a bell with you? Yeah, I, I'm. Pretty sure, yeah, it does. They, they may have copied some of the features on it. Um, uh-huh. And I haven't used it that much. I do have a Gmail account, but because I work for a big, you know, corporation. Right, right, right. right. And I use it there. And it, it works with any email. That's the other thing okay. that's really nice. Mm, that's sure, very sure. nice. Right. And like, so I, and I have my own, you know, I louderback.com I own. And I use, you know, I use, that's my primary personal sure, email. Sure. Gmail is actually I use for spam. So right. I don't need it for that. And <laughs> so, 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 what does the paying version get you? That, Nothing. You're just paying because you're being nice because you, because you want to keep them going. So, how do they finance it then? You know, I have to. I'd have to ask Jeremy, but I think it's really just a server. It's just an email server with some logic, okay. and All right. uh, it doesn't work with attachments. I'll say that. So you can't, you know, send an attachment uh-huh. to it and get the attachment, which makes sense because then you need. You know, to store it somewhere. Buku yeah. storage for the, for right, it, right. but um, they, you know, they ask of five dollars a month or ten dollars a month. But you, I didn't even know they were charging. I just was doing a real research before okay. this, and I mm-hmm. went in. And I'm like, oh, Jeremy's charging for it. That makes sense. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, now I'm actually going to send him money because he really like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay nudge mail like to nudge somebody nudge mail. that's a fantastic nudge thing i had no idea one. um i could see the value of it right off the bat so thank you for that that's really fantastic so tell us um what you're up to what's what's excites you and maybe where people can find more about you and what you're up to in your newsletter Yes. Yeah, well, I'll start saying that um, for the past, as you said at the top, I've been running these events called uh, VidCon, which are all about mm-hmm. online video, which are for fans, right. it's like Comic-Con for online video, but it's also, we have an industry track. We teach creators how to, how, how to, how to build their channels. And, you know, as part of that, I used to, when I was at PC Mag and, and other places, I used to write weekly email newsletters and it was a lot of fun. I haven't done it for probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. But as part of what we do in promoting and getting the word out, I was like, I should just do some content about the creator economy because the creator economy has gotten really hot. Mm-hmm. It's like the next, it's, I don't know, it's the next big thing. But uh, so I started just writing a short little, you know, adding on to our promo newsletters and putting a little bit like, here's an interesting thing I saw. Here's a couple of news things. Here's a couple of other things. It's kind of not, I won't say it's blown up, but people like it. So I do a newsletter about uh, where I interpret a little bit of what's going on in the creator economy uh, and what's happening with online video and YouTube and TikTok and all those guys. But then at the same time, we promote what we're doing. So what's and the newsletter so, called? What's the name of the newsletter? It's called Inside the Creator Economy. Inside the and, Creator Economy. Okay. And and if you go to LinkedIn and just go to my page at LinkedIn and uh, I'm J-L-O-U-D-E-R-B, J louder B everywhere. You'll appreciate this. Um, you guys, that was my MCI mail name. Um, <laughs> Remember, it was like first letter of first right. name, yeah, seven letters. Exactly. Could only be eight characters because of their, you know, and, and I've yeah. just used it ever since. I'm actually Jay Louderby everywhere. You want to go to, t- to TikTok, you want to go to Twitter, whatever. Okay, right. but, that's good to know. <laughs> but, um, but you can go to LinkedIn or you can go to vidcon.com and just scroll to the bottom of any page and sign up for our industry newsletter there. So, so it's, it's not like on Substack or, or anything. It, it's, it's, um, does, it have a, does the newsletter have its own um, location? We're only no. through LinkedIn, okay. No, through uh, through VidCon.com or LinkedIn, and we're we'll get better at it. Um, uh-huh. Well, you know what I really want. I uh, remember in the early days of like email, there was clear clients that would bring all your email into one place, and you know there there was like video distribution. In the early days of Revision Three, when I ran that, we used to take a video, and before YouTube was dominant, it would go out to like thirty different places. I want that for newsletters. I want somebody to allow me to create a newsletter and then. Stick it on Substack, stick it on um, mirror.xyz, stick it on the newsletter stuff that Twitter's working on or Facebook and all these all these platforms working on their own newsletter thing. That's it's like, just let idea. me hit a button and publish yeah. everywhere. That's a really good idea. Mm-hmm. Sounds like another business. 
Yeah, it sounds like a cool tool. 2023 <laughs> yeah. version. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so, okay. So people will I'll have links about where people can go to either LinkedIn or the VidCon. And are you still involved with VidCon? Oh, yeah. I'm still running VidCon. We're doing our first face-to-face -face event since London in February of 2020 in Anaheim. We do it in Anaheim every year. Right. Um, and we're doing it uh, the 21st to 24th of October. It's going to be a lot of fun. People are loving the fact that we're back. Creators, yeah, fans. I was, I was going. Yeah. I had signed up for the one bef right before the COVID came to go, because I've been doing you know videos as well, and um, I didn't really realize you were going back to having them. So, so when is this the next one? October twenty first to twenty fourth in Anaheim. In, in Anaheim, okay, and you're going to be face to face, face to face. Wow, um, that's brave. Yeah, I mean, look, that's it, brave. Well, it's. We're, I mean, brave in the sense that you think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, we've had like our, our, you know, our sales are through the roof. Our sponsorships love it. Uh -huh. We have our, our creators. We have so many creators that I mean, we're maxed out on the creators that are coming. So, and and we're adapting to the world as it develops, yeah. right? We are, you know, a month ago, I was like, yeah, we probably won't be masked. We'll be fine. Now we're like, yeah, we'll probably yeah. be masked. And three months is a long time in COVID world. And we're doing another one in Abu Dhabi in uh, December. And um, I'm an industry one most likely in singapore in november so next year is going to be amazing too so right. if you can't come this year kevin come next year right i'd love to you know i can i'll make sure you have a great time and see all the right yeah yeah so, so for people right who stuff. don't know so this is like a comic con except for comics animation science oh fiction. yeah it's for video I mean, creators and i know so, all about it my uh, daughter jane went to it uh the last time it was open with nice. her friends and had a fantastic time yeah nice yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we'll bring her again um, the, it is, we're actually three events in one in, because we're definitely Comic-Con for online video fans, but, um, it's an industry event as well. Where we bring all the people in the, in the community first media world together to talk about like, how do we build businesses and what's going on and who are the top creators? And then we teach creators how to be better creators too. So right, right. three tracks. Fantastic. Really great. So cool. Well, Jim, this was so much fun chatting with you and I'm glad we, uh, have kind of connected after traveling around in cir same circles for a while. Totally. You and Kevin definitely have to get together now. Yeah, we need to do a hike in our own little Pacifica town. And so um, it was a real pleasure. Thank you for sharing some great stuff that we I had no idea about. And that's always a, a real pleasure being surprised. So thank you. Yeah, and it's like it's really fun for me to talk about gear again. So it's kind of like a <laughs> busman's holiday. I love it. So uh, total blast. I'll see you on the headlands somewhere. We'll go for a hike. Hey everybody, it's your host Mark and I wanted to thank you for listening to the Cool Tools show and I also wanted to let you know that we've got a lot more going on at Cool Tools than just this podcast. We also have the Cool Tools website which has a new tool review every day and you can get there by going to cool-tools.org. We also have four different newsletters that you can subscribe to and you can subscribe to those from the Cool Tools page. We have this podcast that you're listening to right now we also have a YouTube channel where we review tools. Check that YouTube channel out by going to youtube.com slash cool tools. And one of the things I'd like to ask you is if you're really enjoying everything that we are producing, go to our Patreon page and support us there. You can sign up and give us as little as $1 a month, and that would mean a lot to us. The money that we get from Patreon goes towards a lot of things. We transcribe our podcast interviews so that you can read them online. We pay for editing of our podcasts and for our videos. We pay our contributors. We have video production costs. We have equipment costs. We have hosting costs. And the money you give us through Patreon also goes to support Cool Tools Lab. Anything you give is a huge help. And one of the things that we do is if you are a contributor to Patreon, we'll give you a shout out on air. And so I have a few people here to thank this week. Mark Lyonaj, Micah Gates, Monty Zukowski, Patrick James McNally, Robert Cohen, Scott, Spence Lloyd, Steve Avery, Steve Golden, Steve Levine, Tom Hess, William Phillips, Aaron Nipper, Darab Patel, Glenn Mercer, Jay Walker, Jeff Bonner, Ryan Jarrell, Pat Daly, Patrick Kennedy, Troy Wallet, Mike Camerate, Nicole Harkin, Tim Youssef, Scott Reed. Thanks all of you for supporting Cool Tools. 
And if you would like to have a shout out, go over to the Patreon page and sign up. And thanks for listening to the Cool Tools Podcast. We'll see you next week.